Hello, in this tutorial we are going to check a more advanced use case on how to use the template processing features of the Sync HTTP web server libraries uh, for the ASP32. Um, additionally, we are going to use the Arduino core as we did before. As target board, I'm going to use an ASP32 FireBeetle board from DFROG. So, in the previous tutorial, we covered a very simple use case uh, where uh, we have used the template processing features of the ASP32 uh, to replace um, the content uh, placeholder in a very simple HTML uh, string. Nonetheless, we, we were replacing the placeholder by some other static string and we had a single placeholder in our content. Nonetheless, uh, in a more advanced scenario, we, we may want to, for example, uh, to serve an HTML page with a, a nice uh, dashboard showing different kinds of measurements um, for example, temperature and humidity measurements all in the same page. So we need to understand well how we can replace multiple placeholders um, in the same in the same uh, textual content. So basically, for this tutorial, we are going to uh, precisely do that: simulate an HTML page that has both uh, temperature and humidity uh, measurements. And in this case, instead of using uh, instead of using some static content, we are actually going to, to see how to use dynamic content. I'm not going to have my SP32 attached to an actual uh, real uh, sensor, but I'm going to generate the measurements randomly so we can see uh, that by refreshing the page multiple times, we are going to receive the exact same HTML, but uh, with the different values for temperature uh, and humidity. So basically this is the, the idea behind the, the template uh, feature is that we reuse uh, the same HTML, the same HTML structure, but we can have dynamic content uh, inside it. So moving on to the codes, as usually we start by including the libraries and uh, needed to configure everything and we need the credentials of our Wi-Fi network so we can connect the SP32 to it. Then we are going to have here uh, to have here our HTML string, which will be the content that we are going to return back to the client, um, and that will be dynamically replaced uh, with the actual uh, sensor measurements that will be simulated in our case. But it could be easily uh, they could be easily being retrieved uh, from a sensor. So basically, uh, like we covered before. Uh, we need to specify names for our placeholders, uh, but our placeholders need to be enclosed in percentage signs like we have here. So I have a placeholder called uh, placeholder underscore temperature, and then I have another placeholder uh, here called placeholder underscore humidity, uh, both enclosed in percentage signs. Note that this uh, this uh, percentage sign here it's not part of any placeholder. It's just because humidity is typically um, uh, shown as a, a percentage. So uh, we usually refer to the uh, relative percentage of humidity, uh, for example, in a room. So basically, this is our HTML string with the placeholders, and we are going to see in a minute uh, the function that will take care. Uh, of doing the replacement of these placeholders. So before we get to that, as usual, you need uh, an object of class async web server so we can configure everything um, from our route to starting our server. So since we already know what is this processor function from the previous tutorial, and if you haven't seen it yet, I encourage you to do it to better understand. But as a quick recap, basically this is a, a function that will specify how these placeholders here uh, will be substituted, will be replaced uh, by something else at runtime. So and basically this function needs to follow this signature, it needs to return a string and it needs to, to receive a, a reference to a constant uh, string and this, this variable here that will be injected in this, uh, in this processor function by the HTTP web server framework basically will contain the names of the placeholders. Recall from the previous tutorials that what will be injected is the actual name of the placeholders uh, without the percentage signs, okay? 
Furthermore, uh, in this case, since we have two placeholders, this processor function will be called twice, uh, the first time with the first placeholder and the second time with the second placeholder. So, in its implementation, we are going to print here, um, print here the value uh, that we have received in the function. So, as you'll see, uh, when we test this code, this will be called twice because it will print the values of the two placeholders. But obviously, in a real use case, we don't need this. This is just for testing. And then, we have the rules here that, uh, that specify how the placeholders will be replaced. In our case, since uh, this is very simple, we can simply have an if condition that checks, for example, in this case, if the placeholder is a pla uh, is called if the value injected in this function is called placeholder underscore temperature, then we are going to return here a random number between uh, 10 and 20. So I'm assuming and I'm simulating that the temperature varies between 10 and 20, and if, in case the placeholder uh, sorry, the, the variable injected in the function is called placeholder underscore humidity, then I put here the rules uh, for the, the, the replacement, and in this case, we are going to return a string, which is a random number between 0 and 50, and basically this is the value that will be dynamically used to replace this uh, placeholder. Again, like we did before, just as a safeguard, in case we, uh, we do something wrong with this with these if conditions, we return an empty string, uh, just just for for the sake of having everything covered. Obviously, if everything is ever, uh, is correctly configured, we should never eat that part because we should always receive one placeholder or, or another, and we should always uh, we should always have the, all the the rules covered here. So basically, this is it. This is our processor function. Uh, it is very simple, like before. We just added an additional if condition. Uh, to our uh, placeholder substitution logic. So moving on the setup, it's what we have covering before. So connecting the SP32 to the Wi-Fi network, uh, then configuring the route. In this case, my, uh, the route I'm configuring will be called slash sensor and receive HTTP GET requests. And then we use uh, the send underscore P method that allows us to specify the response code. In this case, a success 200. Uh, the content type, uh, text slash HTML, because we are re uh, returning an HTML string. So the actual content, which is a string we have defined uh, before, the, the string we have defined, uh, defined as a global variable. And then the processor function that should be executed against this, uh, this uh, textual content, this HTML string. And obviously, uh, the framework will, under the hood, process this HTML string. We'll find uh, all the placeholders that it contains, and by each placeholder, it will call the processor function that will take care of returning the content to be changed, to be replaced by the given placeholder. And this is it, again, very simple. And to finalize, we call the begin method on our server object, and we have here our uh, empty loop. So I've already uploaded the code to my ASP32, as you can see here. Uh, I had already done some tests. Let me reset the device. I'm sorry. Okay, as you can see here, uh, it has already connected to the Wi-Fi network, and I have already here uh, the IP address. So now I'm going to navigate uh, to. I'm going to use sorry to use uh, a web browser to make an HTTP request to this slash slash sensor route. And as you can see here, I had already obtained some measurements, and as you can see here. Uh, with a new request, this is changing the values. Uh, so it is changing the values because I'm I'm returning random values. But as you can see here, a new request returns the same HTML, but the same HTML content uh, in terms of of the structure of the HTML. But the actual values that I have inside, the actual values for the temperature and for for the humidity have changed. Now, if I go back to my Arduino EDS serial monitor, you can see that the names of both placeholders were printed to the serial monitor, and recall that I have done only one request, and basically the function was executed twice, the first time with the first placeholder, the placeholder underscore temperature, and the second time with the placeholder underscore humidity. So if I go back and now start doing some more requests, as you can see here, uh, the values are changing, uh, because I'm, I'm assigning random numbers, but basically 
uh, we are uh, reusing the same HTML, uh, the same HTML string without having to concatenate and having complicated uh, ways of creating the final the final HTML. So we are reusing it, but we are being able to place there dynamic content. That, as you can see here, as long as I'm refreshing the page, it is returning uh, new measurements, obviously simulated ones, but it should be very easy to connect this to a real sensor. And now, just to show you, we keep receiving, uh, this keeps printing these values to the serial port because uh, obviously the, the processor function is being executed multiple times. So this is very simple, as you can see. We can, uh, we can uh, define more than one placeholder pair Per string and obviously in different routes we can have different placeholders so we don't mix uh, everything we don't mix uh, the substitution logic of one route uh, with the other so you can have both different processor functions for each route and inside uh, each route you can have uh, multiple placeholders for the content return there so this is very useful uh, I, I encourage you to try this to try to to connect and to 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 use this code and reuse it to connect to a real sensor and play around a little bit with these features. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you have enjoyed.